We face a lot of problems in our day-to-day -day life. From money to relationships, everyone is working on solving their problems and living a happy and peaceful life. But in 21st century, we are going to face one of the biggest issues humanity has ever faced. Yes, climate change is definitely the biggest problem of our world. Yes, US dollar might crash as Trump and Biden have printed more dollars than ever and we might experience the biggest hyperinflation in history along with potentially problematic governments that might arise around the world as a direct result of that just like the great depression of 1930s but what i'm talking about it's something intrinsic something that already started to gain traction after 2008 and has definitely accelerated after global lockdowns and economic crash in 2020 nobody exists on purpose Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. In this episode, I am going to explore the issue of nihilism. What it is, its roots in atheism, and how some people become nihilists while others find meaning in life. This is just an introductory episode, so I'm not going to cover works of Nietzsche, Kierkegaard, Dostoevsky, and Camus, as these works deserve their own separate episode. Friedrich Nietzsche said, God is dead. A lot of people think he said that in a triumphant way, which people who have studied a lot of Nietzsche's work may not necessarily agree. In full disclosure, I am agnostic because I haven't personally got a lot of value out of religion and in my teenage years I used to think I am agnostic. In times of trouble, I would become best friends with God, just like jocks become best friends with nerds in the exam hall. So. I'm agnostic, I guess. <laughs> a lot of wars have been waged in the name of religion between different states in human history. Most popular among them being Islamic expansion and Christian crusades. There have been innumerable human rights atrocities committed in the name of God. For example, witch burning, child marriage, genital mutilation, etc. So during the age of enlightenment and industrial revolution, religious influence on society declined. You don't have to pray to God to avoid famines and starvation, win a war or survive natural disasters. Most of us understand or at least have the basic idea why natural or man-made disasters occur. Because of our violent history with religion, the age of reason and industrial revolution, a lot of people moved into completely opposite direction and embraced atheism the last two to three hundred years. That gave rise to atheistic societies which had disastrous consequences which most people could not foresee. I personally have not studied Nietzsche or Dostoevsky. People who have usually say that they predicted two biggest problems that would arise in societies that are atheistic. One of them would arise in 20th century. First World War started after Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by Bosnian Serb student Gavrilo Princip and both Austria-Hungary and Serbia asked help from other countries in Europe like you bring your friends to fight someone and that person also brings friends and it is basically a gang war in your high school. That's basically World War I. Most of these countries, they had colonies all over the world. That's why this became World War One. First World War was possibly the most brutal war the world had ever seen at that point. Western Front was especially brutal because of trench warfare. Soldiers on both sides had to live in extremely terrible conditions for months at a time and then had to face inconceivable firepower trying to overrun enemy trench just to gain a few yards or inches of land of all the major players and US wasn't hit hard since there was an ocean that separates Europe and North America and US entered late in the war. Austria-Hungary and Ottoman Empire dissolved primarily because of World War I. The countries that were hit hardest in terms of economics were Germany and Russia. In Russia, the economic damage caused by World War I along with recent freedoms of peasants with no reparations or social security, beginning of industrial revolution and crazy adventures of Rasputin with Russian nobility caused Russians to revolt against Russian Tsar and Russian elites. This revolution was then hijacked by communists and Bolsheviks. Bolsheviks got control of industrial western part of Russia and because of that won the civil war of Bolsheviks called Red versus non-Bolsheviks called Whites. 
Then Bolsheviks went on removing what little rights and freedoms Russia had gained after the Russian Revolution in an era called Red Terror. Red Terror saw suppression of rights and freedoms among of Russians and construction of slave labor camps called Gulags. Russians did it before Germans. The Red Terror began under Lenin and justified by Trotsky. So the whole idea of Stalin ruining socialism and communism is definitely false. Eastern Europe went further downhill after Joseph Stalin became Lenin's successor. Stalin implemented Marxist policies of collectivization, rapid industrialization. Stalin also implemented policy of cult of personality and started purges in Red Army because of his paranoia of rise of a Napoleon-like figure from the army after the revolution. This implementation of Marxism by Stalin along with his own policies, it's called Stalinism, led to one of the worst authoritarian, totalitarian nightmare states in human history. But there was another who would try to surpass socialist, Stalinist, Soviet Union totalitarianism. And that was Adolf Hitler. Germany had to surrender in World War One. It had to sign a humiliating treaty called Treaty of Versailles. German propaganda led average Germans and soldiers to believe that they were on the verge of winning. So this surrender came as a shock to many Germans. The Kaiser abdicated and Germany became the Weimar Republic. Germany being blamed for World War I had to pay huge reparations and Weimar government started printing money. But the thing about printing money is that it doesn't generate more wealth and resources but devalues the currency itself. So in 1990, one US dollar meant 4.2 German marks, the German currency. In 1923, just four years later, one US dollar meant 4.2 trillion German marks. By November of 1923, hyperinflation paralyzed Germany and only foreign loans and issuing of entirely new currency restored confidence and ended the crisis. But when German economy started recovering, the Great Depression happened. And now all economies in the world started to struggle. So when Adolf Hitler and, and his nationalist socialist party promised to fix everything and put the blame of German suffering on Jews along with inspiring fear of communism, he was put in charge of Germany in early 1930s along with his party. Germany was now under totalitarian government. Suffering of Jews began with German Jewish population. Nazi Germany treated its Jewish population the same way Soviet Union treated its political dissenters. Both Nazi Germany and Soviet Union started with slave labor camps. Nazi Germany went further during World War II by setting up death camps or extermination camps called Holocaust. Jews in Europe had to flee to other parts of the world. Those who didn't died under Nazi occupation of Europe. Those who survived till 1944-1945 were liberated by Soviet Union in the East and United States in the West. While these two ideologies are considered on the extreme sides of political spectrum, there are many similarities that emerge in them. Both of these ideologies are collectivist in nature. They promise to create utopia for everyone, but often end up destroying individual liberties and rights in the process. These are also predominantly atheistic in nature, who use and discard religion based on their agenda. Again, I'm not a religious person. Many religions have brought suffering to the world and continue to do so. I am simply trying to make a point that opposite of so-called crazy isn't necessarily sane. A lot of people in modern society, especially those with high education background, end up discounting religion as barbaric, backward, stupid, dogmatic, etc. and atheism as rational and cool and smart. These people fail to realize that most horrifying societies ever created in human history were atheistic in nature. Doesn't matter if these societies are far right like fascism or Nazism or far left like communism. Most of these societies have lasted only decades unlike liberal democracies like USA which has lasted centuries. Sure, communism, fascism and national socialism came into existence only recently, but most of them have collapsed already. And considering many issues of China, demographic crisis, water crisis, etc., China lasting as a communist state is kind of unlikely. So most of us have learned that collectivist ideologies are not the way to progress. 
while most of us aren't savages like our ancestors i feel that things are boiling just under the surface so for example many modern social media particularly instagram are amplifying envy and pride most people don't act out on wrath and kill people in an act of passion but many are super resentful some people act out on their resentment and end up being mass shooters while there are definitely exceptions the feeling of resentment is definitely not addressed in our society some sins are actually encouraged in modern society directly or indirectly one of the things that modern society has encouraged is gluttony what i don't understand and it is something i would like to explore is why processed sugary foods are cheaper than health healthy foods surely processed foods should cost more because of additional cost of processing and shipping and packaging also modern fast lifestyle discourages cooking foods and encourages fast packaged foods so modern society encourages healthy diets in things like media overall gluttony is on the rise in the developed world lust is another thing that is openly encouraged as long as it is consensual people think of porn as something fun and harmless porn is unfortunately sex education for many young people porn is going to have profound consequences in future society as porn has become part of most people's lives while i'm not discouraging acting on sexual desires as long as it is consensual not considering its romantic or reproductive consequences is like really foolish at best there's also the issue of dating apps which create a marketplace mentality of sorts where people try to date as many as possible rather than finding one person and make it work people break up over petty reasons this marketplace mentality also encourages short term focus rather than long term focus because there are options a lot of people are going to have issues with finding right partner because they don't realize there's a difference between someone who's hot and great for fling and someone who will make a great partner for them in decades to come not to mention the industries that exist to make someone's appearance better and part of self help industry that is focused on having more sex and getting more dates while well, hashtag me to exists overall there's increased encouragement of lust rather than showing restraint what modern society encourages the most however is greed there's no such thing as too much when it comes to wealth in our society only people who are pointing this out are socialists and communists who want to replace the system with something worse which has been proven again and again to be worse but the issue is that wages have not kept up with inflation so people are slowly becoming poorer and rich are becoming richer add to that 2008 financial crisis where only select few typically elites were bailed out even though free market capitalism isn't in favor of governments propping up companies that are failing and more progressive government would have bailed out everyone a lot of top companies around the world should be broken up as they have multiple monopolies a lot of companies like in telecom sector for example are not exactly customer friendly but only survive because of lack of competition a lot of companies don't offer the labor force simple benefits for cutting margins and increasing profits self help doesn't help either courses are taught and books are sold about how to make more money so people are being dragged in an increasingly like hyper productive economy primarily focused on making more money industrial revolution definitely made our living standards better it brought the world closer but it also pushed people away on smaller scale people used to come together in local communities in the evening but now they are either busy working in office and sending emails in their homes or wasting away consuming mindless content this is what i mean by promotion of sins which is one of the side effects of moving away from religion but the biggest issue we have is lack of purpose lack of meaning it is nihilism think about this at this point in time there are almost 8 billion people in the world and that's just the planet earth there are multiple planets in our solar system according to nasa there are about 100 billion stars in our galaxy the milky way and there are more than 100 billion galaxies just like ours in the observable universe and that's just the observable universe there might be another universe there might be more of this universe beyond observable universe we don't know what is what it is so you a human being living among billions of human beings living on this planet alone there's so many planets in the universe so what is your value exactly do you really matter whatever you do in your life does it really matter this is nihilism nihilism simply a philosophy that holds position that life is meaningless 
human values are baseless everything you do is pointless etc that's just you with the scale of space nothing even societies do matter so far there are no nihilistic societies but increasingly nihilism is spreading throughout the world especially in north america and western europe people have been fed a diet of living your dreams becoming famous and rich and successful instead of truth that life is unfair life is suffering this isn't helped by 2008 and 2020 economic crisis both of which have been exploited by economic elites who followed the advice never let a good crisis go to waste and just concentrated their wealth and power just at the time where dream filled millennials and zoomers are entering the workforce it is just easier to become nihilistic nihilism makes sense considering the scale of human population at scale of observable universe but i think nihilism it's cynical laziness ask yourself this why do i think that nothing i do matter how things are around me things in my life would change if everything mattered what would i have to do if everything mattered am i happy with my work life am i happy with my sco- social or romantic life am i happy with my health or my hobbies do i have any addictions if you follow this thinking then it would most likely come down to some fear based emotion like anxiety fear doubt something like that Hey nothing matters so why should i why should i take care of things you know nothing matters so there are no nihilistic societies so far if nothing matters there's no justification for morality you can do anything you want both good and evil the fatal flaw that humans have is we have inherent desire for meaning for purpose to be good and to be perceived as good and not evil and that's why religions have dominated over humanity regardless of civilization and regardless of time so if a society is nihilistic and people have no hope for a better future it is easier for a charismatic sociopath or psychopath probably with a funny mustache to rise up in public consciousness and offer public meaning and greatness if people follow that psychopath or sociopaths or their ideology so even if nihilistic society were to emerge it will slide into tyranny if people don't have hope morality and meaning in their life so here's my counter to nihilism people use specifically use the scale of the universe argument to justify nihilism i intend to counter that with the scientific theory particularly a part of chaos theory called the butterfly effect here's the simplest explanation for the butterfly effect tiny seemingly insignificant choices you make can have huge consequences further down your life or even after your life there are many fictional works involving the butterfly effect but there are many real life examples as well these include an allied soldier choosing to let go of adolf hitler who was a soldier in world war 1 and adolf hitler's action led to the creation of anime missiles nuclear bombs hydrogen bombs etc queen victoria caused 911 queen victoria passed her granddaughter her hemophilia and her granddaughter married tsar nicholas ii the tsar of russia her hemophilia pa- got passed to tsar's son which led to rasputin ri- rise to power in tsarist russia by treating tsar's son bolsheviks then overthrew tsar and russian nobility then soviet establishment decades later started invasion of afghanistan and us trained and armed osama bin laden and his forces to fight soviet invasion and that's how queen victoria caused 9/11 am i pushing things a little bit yes but go back to millions of years all of the humans they have common ancestor if any of them had died before reproducing billions of humans simply would not exist the way do or they may not exist at all what if the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs had wiped out everything else as well so now zoom out into the future thousands and millions of years from the present if humans exist at that point they are most definitely a civilization that affect the entire universe maybe even beyond that and maybe you or one or many of your descendants are an important part of the way to get there so everything you do may affect future of human civilization you are responsible in so many ways for your life and many others across space time just like that allied soldier and just like queen victoria think of all the po- people who exist because of population displacement throughout history especially jews who managed to escape from europe before world war 2 think of all the people who don't exist because someone died before reproducing especially those who died in gulags and concentration camps and how that could affect human beings thousands of years later imagine if newton didn't explore his curiosity sure a physics class 
would be a lot more simple and comprehensible but it would set back humans in knowledge of gravity and aviation and space time by at least for few years if not decades or centuries now think about how much knowledge we have lost in burning of the library of alexandria now let's look at the scale of universe or space to reaffirm their nihilism but when it comes to time they only look at their life or at best few centuries here and there if you are zooming out that far into the space and consider the entire observable universe and beyond you should zoom out with time as well if you zoom out on the timeline thousands or millions of even billions of years in the past and in the present everything that everyone does matters and this is why i am a believer of the butterfly effect and this is why i reject nihilism because everything you do matters in the grand scale of the universe not just for you but for the entire humanity and entire universe so you should be staring for the best possible outcome that you can which is impossible to do by treating in everything in your life as unimportant and meaningless you have to treat everything in your life as meaningful and and important but what about meaning of it all how can you find purpose and meaning to everything that you do in the beginning i mentioned that some people find meaning and some people become nihilistic what do those what do they find purpose and meaning in well different things religious people find life purpose and meaning in god that is pleasing god and being close to god most people usually find meaning and purpose in families that is providing for their family these people go to a job pay their bills pay their taxes put food on the table and spend the rest of the time doing things they like some people devote their life for humanitarian causes they work for non-profit charities they have made helping others their life purpose while others start businesses to help people examples include google whose mi- mission was democratizing technology and information same thing with tesla they wanted to transform the transportation industry and make it more sustainable that is ethical capitalism at least when this company started they were ethical a lot of people are now investing their time money and energy in space and ai this will lead to a time where humanity have spread out in the un- universe enough to make difference in the universe provided humanity doesn't destroy itself they are trying to build a better future but here are a lot of people who meditate in order to calm themselves fully to fully experience the present moment so if you boil all of these down what do all of them have in common they are trying to deal with suffering in their own way this is the biggest question i think in life how do you deal with suffering that is the purpose of our life that that gives our life meaning most people try to eliminate suffering the thing is you cannot eliminate suffering from your life nobody can but most of them are successful in minimizing suffering fun fact even the genocidal societies tried to get rid of certain class of people thought they were doing good for humanity they were obviously wrong some people find solace in god people who become monk to meditate a lot try to accept life then there are some people mostly existentialist types who embrace suffering fully well what do you find meaning in let me know down in the comments below if you like this episode share it with someone who might enjoy it as well anyways thank you so much for giving me some time of your life i hope to see you soon